Okay, so we're back, and what we're going to do now is we're going to move to the next chapter in the Byte of Python textbook, and we're on um, the next chapter is about functions. So if we take a look here, Basically, a function is a way of executing a block of code and calling that block of code by giving it a name and being able to uh, execute it repeatedly. And that function has a specific purpose behind it. So the way we, if I, kind of go to my interpreter the way we define a function okay before I do this in the interpreter I have to show you this in genie because this is actually important so what is the structure of a Python program well the first thing that you have to have are your import li the libraries which you import so that's the that's the very first thing that should come you shouldn't import libraries in the middle of your code so you know you wouldn't you wouldn't start coding like this for da 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 right and then somewhere in the middle of your code you go import a library no you don't do that the import line is the first so if you have more than one imports you might decide to import something else but they all come at the top the next thing after your imports is your functions. So you'll say def, and now def is a, it stands for define, but it's three letters, and you have to have a space after it. And then comes your function name. So I'm going to call my function foo. And then your function has to have an opening bracket to, to allow for arguments in it, but you don't have to have arguments and I'll explain what arguments are in a minute and then you have to have a full colon and then you have to have uh, a tab that defines what your function does so here we could say print hi and so now now that we have unindented that function simply is going to execute one line of code as long as I tab in okay as long as I tab in so those are all inside the function as soon as I untab go back to the beginning of the line now I'm not in the function okay so now I could say something like, you know, x equals 1. And then I could say something like, you know, it doesn't matter. I can say y equals 2. Here's my regular program. It's just what I, how I normally f code. But now comes something interesting. I can actually call that function by typing in foo bracket bracket. Now, a call, this is the function call. Call to foo. And the way it's defined is that you have to have the brackets there. Okay? So in this case, if I run this program, uh, let's just uh, go to functions here and we'll just go we'll call it uh, test one dot py okay so notice when I run this program it just says hi 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 it prints hi four times the x equals one and x equals uh, and y equals two doesn't really uh, do anything it is saving those values in memory but we don't see that however we are calling the function foo on line 14. It has to be previously defined. In other words, watch this. 
if I take this code and I cut it and I put it after the call, if I put it here, okay, now if I run this program, uh oh, it says there's a problem on line eight. It says, I don't know what foo is. You haven't told me what foo is. So this doesn't work. The function this is called right here, I'm going to highlight it. That's called the function definition. Okay? So if I show you on the whiteboard, I want to show you that the way it works is you have your the name of the function comes after def. You have any arguments if you need them, and sometimes you could have nothing, and in this case, for example, it might be nothing. Then there's a block of code that's going to be inside the function. This name is what you call in your regular code by just typing in that name with a couple of brackets. And in this case, since it doesn't require any arguments we send to it, it's going to work just fine. Then that's what we've done here. So what, is, what are these things that I keep referring to when I say arguments? What's an argument? Well, let me show you. So, in look, let's fix this first of all, because this can't be come after. Remember what I said before, right? I said the, the structure of a Python program, the first thing that should appear is your imports. The next thing, and usually I like to leave a space, okay? This kind of doesn't look as um, clean. Then comes your functions. And you might have more than one. So for example, I might have another function, boo, and I might do something else in there. OK? But after all my functions have been defined, that is when I start to code my regular Python program as we have in the past below it. So I, I want you to make note of this because what I don't want to see is I don't want to see you do this. I don't want you to take this function and put it in a place in the middle of your code like that. Please don't do that. Don't put the function in the middle of your program. It should be at the very top. Okay, after imports. I hope I've made that clear because I, I keep seeing the students do this and I ask them, well, why have you done that? And then they say, but it works. Uh, well, yeah, but that's not good code. Okay, it's not clear because when people look at your code, they're expecting to see your functions at the top, the function definitions. So, um, now let's go back to this concept of what an argument is. So in this case, I have two variables here, x and y. I'm going to actually pass those variables to the function. And that's how I do it. They're separated. I can pass just one, in which case you don't need a comma. Um, but I can also pass another one by putting a comma in. And so what should I do now? Is this going to work? Let me try running it and see what happens. No, it fails. And the reason why it fails is it says that I have sent two arguments to the function on line 13, and yet the function doesn't take any arguments. So I have to change this. So let's change this by going A and B. Now, some people actually will think Oh, well, doesn't this have to be x and y? And the answer is no, it doesn't. It could be, and that would be fine, but it's not going to be the x and y. It's not going to be this x and y. OK? Um, So let's just leave this as different letters for now so that you recognize that they're not the same. 
And if I came down here and I printed A and then I printed B, now let's see what happens. If I run this, it says hi hi and then it prints A which is 1. Notice the 1 here. And that is correct because x is equal to 1 from here. And then it prints 2 and b is 2 because we passed the value of y. Sorry, we passed the value of y to b. So notice we've passed two arguments, x and y, and they go into a and b. So in other words, if I was to kind of draw this as a picture for you, um, our function is called foo, so let me fix that. Uh, okay, and let's get rid of that. So our function was foo, and we're passing a and b to it. But when I call it, I'm, I'm calling it with uh, foo x and y, where x was equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. I don't have to use variables. I could actually hard code those values, but I want you to understand something. This variable is the value of this guy is being put into there, and the value of this guy is getting put into there. They're actually separate entities. In other words, um, the a and the b here are different from the x and the y here. But you're putting the value of this in there. So it's you can almost think of it like copying it, but not exactly. That's more like C++. Python's a little different. However, let me illustrate this with a program. So watch this. Let's, let's try using to confuse students, let's try using x and y. Oh, and before I continue with this, actually before I do x and y, let's try just instead of sending variables in, let's try sending values in. Okay, so let's try sending 3 and 4. So let's run this. Notice now it says 3 and 4 after high high. So you're not restricted to using a variable, but you can use a variable if you wish. You could use uh, literal values as well. Or alternatively, it doesn't matter. You could even use a string. You could say by, comma. You could send any. It doesn't. The, the data type doesn't matter, right? Because Python has uh, dynamic typing, so. Dynamic means changing. So I could say by chow or something like that. And um, if I run this, it's going to say hi hi by chow. So notice that it doesn't have to be integers that you send. You could send any data type. However, once again, these are, these are literals. If I changed it back to x and y and I changed this to a buy and you know goodbye that's still going to work okay so now that you've seen this the the question that I want to or the example that I want to show you is that if I change this to X and I change this to Y students often are confused by this so if I change this to x and I change this to y, they think, ah, I get it. So let's see if we can change the value of x in this uh, program. Let's say x equals um, something like, hello. And then I'm going to change, I'm going to print the hello. And I'm going to say this is, uh, make this into an f string and I'll say inside foo x is x equals 
x. Okay? Then I'll come down here. Well, let's just let's just leave this for now. And let's let's see what x is. Ready? Let's run it. It says, hi hi, inside foo, x is equal to hello. Does that make sense? Do you notice I changed the value of x to hello? Let's let's print it out before here. So let's let's go like this. Let's um, and paste it here. Let's get rid of the hi hi for now because that's just in the way. And so let's run that. Inside foo x is by inside foo x is hello. So on this line, first it's by, then we change x to hello, and then we print out the value of x and we recognize what it is. So here comes the crux of the issue. Watch this. If I now print out x after I call the function, what do you think that x is going to be? So this is, let's make turn it into an, another f string and let's go after or let's say after foo x is equal to x. And so let's run this now. For, before I run it, make a prediction as to what you think the value of x will be. Do you think it's going to be by or will it be hello? Let's try. And you notice that even though we have changed the value, inside it was originally by on line four, then on line six it's hello, but after even after we call the function, it's still by here. And the reason I do this and show students this is that that x and y are not the same x and y. Okay? So if I go back to the whiteboard, so if I kind of redraw this whole thing to clean up this mess, and I say, all right, inside the function foo, Oops, that's a y. The x and the y in here are called their local variables. OK? Um, especially, or not especially, particularly important is this line here, line 5. Notice that I changed x. Question. Can I can I modify a string? Answer no. So therefore, what's the only way in which I can change a string? Answer, I have to redefine the string. And as soon as you say x equals here, it's a local variable. OK? The weird thing is that um, we're actually passing x to it, but actually we're just passing a value to it here. Um, so this, this is now a local variable. Uh, a local variable just means that the variable's value exists only inside the function. So we can't change the value outside of the function by changing it in the function. Unless the variable is mutable. OK? And the only thing right now that we know is mutable is a list. We're going to touch upon this more next time. but. Right now, I, we haven't even touched upon uh, what types of data a function returns. 
we're going to do that next period. And we're also going to look at uh, what functions are used for. In this case, all I'm doing is printing stuff inside the function. This is not what pr functions are utilized for. That's not their purpose. Usually their purpose is to return information. So if I give you a really simple example of this, if I got rid of all that and I got rid of this, here is more of a typical use of a function. If I said x equals 3 and then I, let's get rid of this. If I, inside the function, if I said something like, um, it's a very simple function, so I could create a new variable, say y equals x to the power of 2. I mean, obviously this is not very useful, but now I could say return y. And so now, if I ran this program, you're going to see nothing's going to happen. Nothing happens. And that's because the call to x is returning a value, but I'm not doing anything with it. So I could say answer equals foo. Now I'm, now I'm at least storing the value, but still not doing anything with it. But now I could print the stored value. And now you're going to see it's going to do something. It's going to print out 9. And this return statement sends information back. And this foo call gets replaced with the value which the function returned. OK? So we'll stop there for today. And um, we'll uh, continue next time.